Distinguished guests, colleagues, fellows. Growing up, it was always my dream to be a general practitioner. Inspired by my father, who is a true GP consultant, a doctor, a mentor, and a leader in his community, my community, I had visions of living in rural Victoria and opening my very own clinic. Driven by the knowledge of the social and health impacts possible through the highest quality general practice, the general practice I had grown up watching every day. I too wanted to shape community health, guide families through the most difficult of life transitions, support the most vulnerable members of my community, and bring comfort and well-being to the lives of those who entrusted me. Well, today I live a very different life. You could say half a world away. Instead of the small country town and the GP practice I dreamed of, instead of delivering babies and helping to shape the health and lives of my immediate community, I help shape the science, political rhetoric and policies that influence lives across the planet. I left medical school and completed an internship and a little further, and then strayed from the traditional path to complete a master's in public health, then a PhD in global health working in Mongolia, and a postdoc that saw me move from my home in Copenhagen to the Harvard Medical School for the next two years. This morning, I actually landed at 5 a.m. from Oslo, where I'm helping to shape a new global integrated platform, bringing together some of the greatest challenges of our modern time, climate change, food security, global health and nutrition, working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the World Economic Forum. And in little more than a month, I will move to the World Health Organization Geneva and begin a new senior role focusing on non-communicable diseases and nutrition for vulnerable popula populations worldwide. But today is not about me, it is about you. It is not about what I do for the health of populations to influence po policy or to protect populations under threat. It is about what, what each of you and general practice as a collective can and must do. Today, as you embark on this journey as health leaders in your communities, our three greatest global challenges are problems we, as humans, have created ourselves. The very success we associate with the technological, social, and economic progress made over the last few centuries now threatens our health and the planet that we inhabit. The first great challenge is, of course, climate change. As the world passes the critical 400 parts per million concentration of atmospheric carbon, this year is once again on track to be the hottest on record. Unmitigated rising sea levels will mean more conflict, displaced populations and more severe natural disasters. Serious threats which overwhelmingly and disproportionately affect the poorest and those communities least prepared or able to cope, particularly in our region. Climate change is a health problem and you are now the frontline health actors. The second great challenge is non-communicable diseases heart disease, diabetes, cancers, mental illness, and respiratory diseases. These diseases share common risk factors and determinants, and despite therefore being collectively preventable, together they constitute some 68% of global deaths in 2015. Now these are not diseases of rich, old, lazy white men. These are diseases that cause, deepen, and entrench poverty, with the world's poorest populations and the poorest in our very own communities bearing the brunt of NCD, morbidity, and mortality. And the third challenge is the rise, the insidious rise, in social, economic, and finally health inequality around us. By 2015, 50% of global wealth will be held by 1% of the population. Today in Australia, the poorest 20%, comprising 1.73 million households, have less wealth than the 10 wealthiest families. The gap between rich and poor is massive and increasing here in Australia. Few of us are concerned, and our government is doing too little to intervene. The good news, though, is that just as we are the cause of these, great, these three great challenges, we too can be their solution. The best news is that as doctors, and particularly GPs, 
You are an empowered group to catalyse change. I humbly suggest three ways. First of all is to recognise and remember the incredible power that you possess as GPs to be spokespeople in society. When you speak, people listen. Politicians listen. Businesses listen. And some of the most trusted and respected society members sit in this very room. In fact, there are few people better positioned or more able to shape and reshape societal and political rhetoric than you. This is particularly true when we are talking about health or its social and commercial determinants. As a single GP, you must champion and shape the health of your patients. As a small group, you can work with local governments to influence the well-being of your communities. And as a group of almost 28,000 powerful, respected professionals, with only your patients' best interests at heart, you are a formidable political voice for change, and we need change. Second is to champion a rethinking in our healthcare system. In 2015, two in three Australians are overweight or obese, as are one in four of our children. Approximately one million Australians suffer from type two diabetes, and a further half a million are likely to be affected but unaware. We are spending unprecedented sums on preventable disease, yet spending less than 2% of our current health expenditure on prevention. Understanding the importance of prevention in all its forms and the impact of the social determinants of health on the well-being of patients and populations cannot be underestimated. You must urge governments to increase investment in avoiding disease. Further integrate this into your practice and see its advocacy as a core responsibility within your mandate. Prevention-focused healthcare must be the future of any sustainable healthcare system for Australia. Primary care must be the platform and general practice has to own this transformation. Third is to connect the dots on health. The days of one pathogen causing the majority of community disease are long gone. And as Margaret Chan, the Director General of WHO says, our major health enemies these days are stronger, more powerful and far more complex. As a coalition, you must look beyond health outcomes and use your role and your voice to question the determinants of disease in our current broken system. Call our governments on inaction which leads to profit for companies at the continuing expense of populations. Ask why we allow McDonald's to saturate poorer neighbourhoods, but don't ask that those same neighbourhoods or demand that those same neighbourhoods have adequate, affordable access to fresh food alternatives. Ask why we allow predatory, purposeful and pernicious marketing by, to children by soft drink companies and others in TV times when we know and they know that children are watching alone and for products we know cause disease challenge governments when they put childhood obesity simply down to poor parenting, an insult to us all. Understanding and challenging the deeper policy drivers that cause ill health in your patients, you cannot underestimate your ability to shape, challenge and reshape public rhetoric and policy outcomes. If we look at obesity, a major driver of the obesity epidemic globally, NCDs, and even our climate challenges, comes back to a single decision made on economic grounds to subsidize corn and soy crops in the United States in the 1970s. They chose to make those crops cheap, making sugar and meat cheap, creating commodities and an agricultural system based on massive monocultures that we are now realizing as a driving force in obesity even here in Australia. Were doctors involved in this decision? No. But have we learned from this defining mistake and have we become more involved? No. These are the decisions and the issues that your profession must see, confront and challenge because general practice must be that voice of reason, of equity and of a healthier future. 
In closing, Verkov famously said that the physician is the natural attorney of the poor, the vulnerable, the voiceless, and the marginalised. In the face of enormous and often overwhelming collective challenges, it is easy to lose sight of the power and influence those six little letters before your names or the two letters of GP after it do make. As you embark on an incredibly exciting career, choose to be a great generation of GPs that continue to change your patients' lives for the better, but also choose to be that generation of GPs that challenge and affect the upstream determinants that lead to disease on a wider scale. Don't see your workplace ending at the walls of your clinic, but see that it is only where your work begins. Connect the dots on health, and don't just tackle the outcomes of disease, but also the structural drivers that cause it to begin with. Because being a doctor and the responsibility that comes with it is immense. The trust it grants us, the voice it lends us, the opportunities for making truly profound, positive impact in the lives of others cannot be underestimated, nor can it be overemphasised. We often don't know where life will take us or the opportunities it will afford. And who knows, maybe I will find myself one day as a country GP. But one thing that we do know is that as the 1% of the 1%, and as some of the most educated, empowered professionals in society on a journey of profound responsibility, and as one of 28,000 in possibly the most powerful coalition of political change in this country, Never lose sight of your doctor title and its responsibility. Never forget the words of Verkov. Never underestimate your voice and never lose sight of your impact. New fellows, my sincerest congratulations. Thank you.